Welcome back to Following Noah Donald's Family Podcast. This week is episode 208, and we are in chapters 11 through 19, finishing part one of The Lost Metal by Brandon Sanderson. Elliot, how are you? I'm doing great. We are flying through the start of this book, but the chapters are really fast. I think you warned us this, but you can read a whole chapter in like five minutes. You can you can really kind of cruise this book. Except for chapter 19. Chapter Except 19 chapter is like... 19. Yeah. Chapter like 19 a, was a tad longer. Yeah. Full, full Stormlight uh, chapter. All right. Paul, how are you? Fantastic. This is... Uh, we're, we're, we're starting to ramp up with some pretty big reveals we'll get to. Some pretty crazy stuff. So I'm thrilled i'm super stoked really excited to talk with y'all about it so all right we'll see if elliot can summarize it let's roll intro and then talk about chapters 11 through 19 Doke. Chapters 11 through 19, closing out part one of The Lost Metal. We are still with our heroes. They've got some trellium, and they're messing around with it. They try a bunch of different experiments, including, you know, blowing up the entire lab in the basement, because that's what you do, I guess, when you've got a, a home lab and you're messing around with the uh, Crazy, crazy metals. In in other plot lines, though, Wayne and Milan have a, a breakup, which I guess implies that they've been together this whole six years. And uh, it's a bit of a messy breakup, but M- Milan is off to explore the Cosmere and uh, is not going to be taking Wayne with her. So a bit of a messy, messy breakup there. Wayne spends... Probably the next three or four chapters de- dealing with that and talking to different people about the implications of that. And I don't know, not handling it, not not taking it so well. He seems to be very, very broken up about that. He goes and has dinner with uh, his old flame, Renette, and her current flame, Jaxi, I guess it was the, the name there. Mm-hmm. How is that uh, spelled, by else? the way? I don't know if I've actually even seen that name spelled out. I think it's just a simple J A X Y. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, let's see what happens. Oh, yeah. They, they blew up the lab. Talked about that. Wayne is rich, apparently. One of his <laughs> coping scenes is him getting accosted by his accountants and them running through all his financials with him. And then at the end of all this, they kind of conclude that the set must be working on a bomb. They managed to explode their own basement, and so they say, well, we know the set's kind of ahead of us on this, so they've probably already exploded their basement and are on their way to building a bomb and are going to sneak it into Ellendell. So they plan to go out to Bilming to go chase them down. And then in that rather long chapter 19 that we mentioned, Wax has a good long conversation with Harmony and some very interesting information drops there. I, I won't get into it now because I'm sure we're going to get dissect it when we get to it. But uh, yeah, Harmony Wax decides to pick back up the Sword of Harmony himself. Yes, become the the Sword of Harmony. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, Paul. There's a lot. Where are we starting? I want to start with the Wayne stuff. Um. Notably, it was, I thought it was absolutely hilarious that Wayne was being pestered by his accountants, and it's because he's, you know, whenever this scene started, I thought he was in debt yeah. or something, some kind of trouble. But they're like, Wayne, you are too rich, and your money <laughs> is too, you have too much money that is unused, just floating. We've, we have to sit down and talk about this. Not only that, not only is he filthy rich, but Wayne is unexpectedly and kind of accidentally a genius at, at like investing and entrepreneurship and just all these th- things. 
It was absolutely hilarious. I, I got a big kick out of this scene. I also got a huge kick out of this because Wayne hates it. He's like, there's nothing worse than these accountants. <laughs> you know, there's literally nothing ever worse. And he, like, requires to wear one of their hats so he can at least kind of try to play the role of accountant. But he just absolutely loves it the whole time. I thought it, I thought this was hilarious. I think this may be one of the funniest chapters of a Cosmere book we, we've had. I, I think it was very hilarious, very amusing. I really enjoyed it. And it, it and, is just very fitting, very Wayne-esque. And, and continuously beats the dead horse with this metaphor of a funeral. And yes. like stretching out over <laughs> yes. multiple chapters, this whole comparing everything about this meeting with the, the accountants to preparations for a funeral. Yes, it, it was absolutely ridiculous, and uh, and <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't even know what to think about this. Of like Wayne has been accidentally. I still can't tell how much is accidental in, in full honesty, and how much is like is Wayne actually like intentionally geni- a genius? He seems to to not overcomplicate things. He's talking about like this whole like sporting realm and stuff. And he was drawing on things that we today know to kind of work. If people want some, uh, 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 you know, a team to rally behind, it's very important. You know, people enjoy it. It's not just a frivolity or whatever, you know, all this stuff that's very profound for someone of his time frame, And they're like, absolutely. There's no way this would work. I don't know why you'd think this, but we understand why that might would work. It, it was just very goofy. It, I, I, I think, I don't know, my congratulations to Brandon Sanderson for writing this chapter because it was hilarious. I'm trying to figure out if there's something I should actually make out of it or if this is just a chapter that he wanted to write because he'd like, this would be incredibly amusing to, to, to write and to have about Wayne's character. I'm really glad you brought it up because I couldn't agree more. The, the funniest part to me is you know all these accidental investments but wayne accidentally inventing professional sports is like yes. so so funny to me like I, we could make like a stadium and they could pay a couple bucks and get in the door or something i don't know just wh- whatever will make me bankrupt he just doesn't want to like deal with his money anymore yeah. and then like over the last couple of years he's like backed the only electrical company in the world and then he's also like made like housing communities and created like a bunch of jobs like accidentally. Yeah. Like <laughs> it's it's I think it was a hilarious stroke of genius to have Wayne be like actually like the most like one of the most influential, if not the most like influential business people yeah. <laughs> on schedule, like altogether. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um Another thing I wanted to mention with Wayne's character. So, okay, I'll, I'll briefly touch on the whole situation with him and Mil- Milan. It, it, it was, this was sad and, and interesting. It, I didn't take too much from this personally. I don't know if y'all had anything else to to say about that. Um, I guess it was like a six year relationship, but it, it, I don't know. You know, with the Chondra and such, it, this it felt a bit funny. And so I didn't take too much out of it other than provides insight to why, why Wayne is feeling down. I think we mentioned last episode about, like, Wayne kind of having a more harsh tone towards himself, harsh outlook towards himself as a guy, you know? Yeah, um, that continues in this episode, too. It definitely does. The The main thing I wanted to point out with that is... Wayne talking what talking with Jaxie, I think, right? And Marisy about um Jaxie and Renette. Yes, sorry, Jaxie and Renette about um the girl, the girl he visits whose father he killed in the past. Alreandra. Um, Alreandra, yes. Um I feel like that's where it really set in. In, in this that was an interesting chapter an interesting dialogue for me um so what i think it's renette who brings it up of like wayne probably isn't going for her to make sure she's okay 
because she likely wants to not be reminded right of that situation right um and it, it was very it was a very interesting chapter i'm i'm actually very i'll probably go back and reread that at some point because i don't know i was kind of fascinated by the logic like the psychology of it of you know i've been thinking of wayne as doing this visiting ariandra to kind of pay penance to make to try and make right of what he had done so wrong but is is it right still i guess I, I, this was fascinating i don't know if you all have any any thoughts on this or any of the other wayne moments there, there's a lot of a lot of wayne moments in this episode yeah the so somebody mentions that it's been over 20 years since he killed their dad and I, I think it's Jaxi. It brings it up of, you know, these these girls probably like aren't really mourning that much anymore. Like, you know, yeah, they they were sad that they lost their father twenty years ago, but they're all in their like mid twenties, young thirties. They don't want to see you every month. Like they they don't they don't care. You're not going for them. You're going for you because you still punish yourself for this. So, yeah, back to that last week's conversation. This whole Wayne self-deprecation thing is is definitely under the surface there. And it really comes down to is he is he doing it to try and make it better, or is he actually doing it to punish himself? Is it? Is it a punishment yeah. instead of an atonement? Uh, again, you said it, Paul. We're bordering into like the psychology side of of this. I, I don't know how quite to to dissect this, but they, they they ask Wayne some some kind of challenging questions, and he does make a change at the the end of it. Seems like he he orders his accountants, who are trying to figure out what to do with his money, to set up recurring payments, automatic recurring payments out of his uh, account that's something else that he maybe invents in this episode <laughs> is uh, automatic withdrawals <laughs> um i was gonna say something i don't remember what it must have not been important the other half of that couple what's milan going to go do guys you're muted paul Whoops, yeah, I realized. Explore the Cosmere, right? She's yeah. going to go hop around a bit. So, so assuming we may see her somewhere else one day. Yeah, I was going to say, minor spoilers, she's gone. Is Milan the Sunlit Man? Is that what we're going to find out? Oh, that perhaps. Be cool. But, yeah, she's not in the story anymore. I mean, I guess I could have saved that for you guys, but she's, she's off into the Cosmere, she's gone, so... Any any hypotheses on where she'll show up? We um, had a theory. Or Breaker Two. That's my guess. Okay. I sooner than that, maybe. I'm wondering. I'm expecting a Chandra in Stormlight Five, which, as we said, is about less than four months away from now, because, um, I think I'm going to spoil some. Yeah, I'm going to spoil some unreleased stuff, I think. Some preview chapters. So if you want to avoid that, skip skip forward like two minutes. In one of the unreleased chapters for Stormlight 5 preview chapters, Hoyd and, and Yasna are fixating on like this contract with Odium. And Hoyd goes like, oh, wait, contracts. I know a guy cutscene yep and and we had we read that right as we were reading we were in the midst of mistborn era one and the light bulb went on for us because we just read it or for me anyway i was like wait contracts Condra talk about that in mistborn era one all the time and so now i'm like okay hoyd's got a Condra to come in and lawyer on the the contract that they've got milan maybe although I feel less strong about that now that in Mistborn Era 2, apparently contracts is not really conjures things anymore. 
that was a that was an era one thing, especially that Milan. Is thing. True. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say Milan, not whatsoever. And right. also, isn't Mistborn era two after Stormlight five? Like yes. Oh, well, that, that was my thought of. I don't know that that would work unless well, she's doing some crazy stuff we really don't know about. You know. Yes, you are correct that the Alloy of Law is shortly after Stormlight 5. I think she'll probably show up in the back half of Stormlight. I think that's a pretty safe bet, as we could see Chandra in Stormlight Era 2. That totally feasible, if not even odds. Like, yeah, I, I would bet on that. I have zero information on what where when secret project five is supposed to be about mm-hmm. so it's yeah. completely irrelevant it may not even be correlated to cosmere or in the right time frame I'm like if we're talking about something soon soon it probably be it could be that so who knows it's titled the isles of ember dark ah, that's all i know I didn't read the preview chapters yet. Alrighty. Um, we spend like five chapters in this laboratory figuring out what Trellium is. What did uh, anyone learn anything? Yes. Okay, what did we learn? Many things. Okay. These this was some fun chapters. This was some fun chapters. Because Wax, Wax and Steris specifically have gotten very scientific. I'm proud of them. They yeah. are, they've got a whole lab set up. They've got some equipment. They are like systematically going through all the tests that you would go through if you had an unidentified metal and you wanted to know more about it. And I was really having fun reading about it. They do all the basic stuff that you learn about in mechanical engineering school that I went to, like hardness testing you can take a metal and you can press other metals and substances into it and depending on how like deep of a scrape you leave that tells you how hard it is and you can kind of rack and stack and rank it and they talk about taking diamond which is like the hardest stuff you can find and scratching it and sure enough diamond scratches the stuff but not nearly as much as others so they learn that trellium is really really hard they, I'm, I'm going to give you guys a science lesson here in a minute, but kind of skipping ahead a second, they they discover a fair amount about this trellium, which, help me remember the description, it's like reddish somehow? Yeah, it's like, it's like dual color. It's like rusty, yeah. but also like Blotchy metallic maybe? gray. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that's what I was thinking. My brain almost wanted to go down like a, like a marbled looking type mm-hmm. substance with like red through it. Yeah. Maybe something of those effects. So it's red. It's weird. They think it's not of this planet. That seemed to be a, a conclusion or maybe a hint we've gotten before that maybe Trellium is brought from somewhere else. Yeah. It reacts to harmonium and allomancy, which is kind of weird. Marisi discovers this pretty fast that she she moves it closer to some of the metals in it like like magnetics almost like pushes away. Wax then discovers that when he burns anything inside of him it the trellium reacts to that to him as if he's a metal, right? Yeah. Which is kind of fascinating. And this get, this gets back to the discussion we've had a couple times and actually was coming up on our Discord just uh just the other day of like where's where's the investiture in all of this is it is it investiture that the trillium is is pushing against is it metals when you are accessing investiture or using investiture through the metals is that like the power that the trillium doesn't like are we talking about you know we're going to bring in stormlight again are we talking about like anti investiture here with with trellium something on is is this another category of magic and stuff well 
and and wax makes the observation that if it he he immediately equates it to magnets to like yeah. it, it seems like it's reacting like a magnet would to these other metals but then he makes the also the observation that well that would imply that it would be the same charge that of right. these other metals because they're repelling so he, he i mean he's just as confused as you and i are of okay so if the metal has investiture in it then why don't all invested metals repel each other why is it just right. trellium versus all these other normal metals we have so yeah that i mean i don't know if that's more questions than answers than we started with but well and we also get a little bit of physics from vendel the chondra who shows up about halfway through all of this he actually tells us that in the physics of he, he gives us another little physics lecture he he explains that in the physics of the cosmere there's matter and there's energy same as our world but then there's also investiture and he, he specifically explains it in that context of there's matter there's energy and there's investiture and you can you can transform different substances into others like energy into matter or matter into energy or investiture into matter or investiture into energy which makes a ton of sense right like in yumi they've got these like it feels like electricity but it's kind of not right that powers their whole world the, right. the, the lines what do they call them see he, no he on he on he on lines yep he on lines yeah not to be confused Where, with c owns yeah, he, I guess I didn't make that connection before. We're getting a lot of terms. The Heon lines on on Yumi's world, Yumi's planet. That's like you know could be investiture turning into energy or, or something along those lines. But anyway, back to our back to our metals here. My favorite part of all this was when they start to use. Oh, I meant to look up the pronunciation of this word and I didn't. Spectroscopy is how I say it in my head, but that could be wrong. So it's, Michael Kramer says it. Is that how he says it? Okay. Spectroscopy. Yeah. yeah. The, the area of study that is spectroscopy is fascinating. And there are so many different things that you can do with this. Basically, the way it works. Well, so I'm a visual person, so I dug you guys up a picture. Go ahead and hop in the, in the Discord. And Trevor, hopefully you can pull us up on our video for our YouTube viewers. Go ahead and pull this up. This is... Uh, a little bit of an explainer for what spectroscopy is all about. So you've got your your spectrum of visible light, right? So that's at the top of this little picture. There's just the the continuous spectrum of visible light that runs from red all the way down to purple. We actually talked about this briefly when we were talking about red shift and blue shift. This is this is the same thing. As we were talking about it backwards, we did get it wrong in that episode, <laughs> yeah. which I felt very bad about later. Yes, but. What you can do with this is if you take any element, like off the periodic table, think hydrogen or gold, gold or iron or anything, anything at all. And if you can excite it, if you can put like energy into it, like burning it, that's usually the easiest way to do that. Burn it. It is going to put off light in very specific bands. It's going to emit light in always the exact same subset of light bands that's not the full continuum. It's not going to put out completely full-on white light. It's always going to put off light in specific color bands. And it's, it, it varies. Sometimes it's one color. Sometimes it's 10 colors. Sometimes it's a ton of colors. So you can see is here in how, the picture, you can see... Is this how fireworks ahead. work? Yeah, more or less. So when you, okay. when you put different... No, exactly. It's exactly how fireworks work. When you when you put different elements that emit light only in like red bands, you're gonna when you light that on fire, you're gonna get red light coming coming off of that. And if it's only in blue bands, you're gonna get blue light coming off of that. So yeah, I think that's exactly what is happening with fireworks. So here in this in my example that I pulled up, it shows hydrogen, neon, and mercury. So you can use this to do cool things in, in science and physics where if you have something that you don't know what it is and you burn it. You can look at exactly what light did it put off and then just compare it to our known values of all the materials out there, and it'll tell you exactly what it is. You can do this in astronomy 
and we do scientists do this a lot. Think of like the James Webb telescope that just went up. They can look at galaxies and stars and planets that are far, far, far away. But the light that is coming to us from there, they can dissect it out and learn what elements are on that planet or in that star or in that galaxy based on the light that's coming in. Because we can look at this and say, well, yeah, when I burn hydrogen over here, it puts off this light. The light coming from that star way away is hydrogen. So it must be a hydrogen star. Cool stuff like that. Wax is doing exactly that in this scene. He takes the trellium and he burns some of it and he gets light off of it. But the result he gets is really interesting. And I wish I knew more about this to try and guess at like maybe what this means. What he claims is that when he burns the trellium, he gets the full continuous band of visible light. That he doesn't get a segmented only a few bands of light. He gets it all. That's what they say in the chapter. And I need like a, a physicist to weigh in here. Somebody who's listening to us, jump on our Discord, jump on our YouTube, help me with this. What does that mean here? What's the physics and science behind that? I know it has to do well, with like how the how the electrons in the in the atoms are are reacting. Like they they bounce to different levels and they put out light based on that. And some elements put off like very specific bands, other elements like uranium put out definitely not the whole continuum, but quite a bit. So like if something's putting off the whole continuum, does that mean this is a really excitable metal? I don't know. Don't they also imply that it's off the chart? Like it's, it's burning infrared light. Like as their spectrometer is going, it kind of just like goes off the table. I think so. I think you're right too. Which, that, well, the scene's coming back to me now. So, Marisi's just as confused as Paul and I look right now. Um, and so, they try to explain it to her. And they come to the conclusion that because it's, because it's showing all, like, possible light and then going off the scale, that means it's a god metal. And Marisi's like, and how do you know that? Like what? Why? Why does that mean that? And Wax basically says, "Well, because harmonium is the only other metal that's done that before." So he just equates he he puts it in the harmonium class on the periodic table, like the noble gases, the god metals. Like it, it's 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 there. Just go go look go look again. Um. So that would. Probably that that's how well they're probably coming to the conclusion that it's off world because it, they're equating it to harmonium. And if it's not of harmony, then it must be of something equal to harmony, mm -hmm. AKA off world. I, yep. I think that's, I think that's the conclusion they get to in a roundabout way. And, and back to the addition of investiture in our physics here. I wonder if that is part of this. I'm wondering if, like if, if all you're talking about is energy and matter and the transference of matter into energy, you're not gonna get a perfectly white, white light full continuous spectrum coming off of anything. But as soon as you add physics we don't have on earth, like investiture, maybe that's what's doing this. Maybe, maybe our God metals are like, they come with investiture. Maybe the maybe the other metals don't innately have investiture in them. You just when you burn them get access to investiture. But maybe harmonium and trellium and god metals like come imbued already. And that's what they're seeing when they when they light this up here is physics you can't really explain elsewhere because it's investiture powered. I'm chiming in to say I think this has been my favorite science moment with Elliot's thus far. It was really yeah, cool. I, 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 I love the the stuff with light. I think is really cool, and the stuff with color. Um, I'm very eager to hear if if anyone listening does have further information on that. I think that'd be awesome. I'm kind of chalking it up to like so. This is like a you know unknown metal. I'm wondering. So I know Brandon Sanderson puts a lot of effort into 
researching the science behind a lot of stuff. I know we talked about this with like G force, what your body can handle. There's I'm sure many, many other examples of Brandon making sure he knows what he's talking about. We, we've seen this a lot with the metals of like referencing these metals. And we're like, that's not a real metal that doesn't mm-hmm. exist. And then you look it up and it does exist. And you know, it, what he's saying about it is pretty scientifically accurate. You know, like he, he does his research. I'm wondering if this is like a, just a fantastical, almost soft magic, if you will, implication of like, it's just glowing because it's just fantasy metal or whatever, or if this is actually like, there's something legitimate coming into play or something well, like that. I, I, I'm curious. And I'm also curious to know if like, he plans to go somewhere with this in era three, like he's setting something up of like, I'm secretly a huge science nerd and I want to explain all this to you, but I'm not going to do it yet. I, yeah. I'm curious if that's where he's going with this or if he's just going to leave it as mysterious as we have it now. But I agree with you, Paul, that I think Elliot's explanation there like added a lot to the scene that I already read. Um, yeah. Of getting to fully understand it. So that's cool. And I'm also my- excited to learn that this is likely somewhat how they do fireworks because we had July 4th not too long ago at the time of recording. I guess we're 10 days past it. And it always, you know, it always fascinates me. I always wonder about that. So it's kind of neat. And my, my graphic here is, is very colorful. Like I highly recommend if you're just listening to us on, on Spotify or wherever, hop on our YouTube for this uh, channel and check out this, this image. Cause it really, I'm a visual person. So seeing this kind of stuff really, helps explain to me what's going on here that this is exactly what wax and stairs will be looking at is a kind of readout like this that is that is pointing to different color bands that are looking at this and i should say quick a uh, quick shout out to to uh the university of california santa cruz i stole this graphic off of your physics department page so thank you for showing this so clearly and simply i had to borrow it but i'll i'll, I'll shout you out all right and then they blow up the basement and then we're not even done with the physics because they blew up the basement. And then they talk about how they blew up the basement. So now we can even get into that, which is pretty fascinating. Although, help me, help me a little bit with this, guys. So the experiment that Wax cooks up for this, he's got harmonium, which we actually learn more about harmonium quite a bit in this chapter two. We're told that it's equal parts atium, which, stop right there, there's an answer to the question we were actually stewing on a few times in this of like, well, where's all the ATM? That was such a big deal in era one was whoever had the ATM had the power. Era two, poof, no ATM, nowhere. Well, yeah, because it's in the harmonium. It's in harmonium with Larassium. Larassium, yeah. Larassium, yeah. And if and if you guys didn't pick this up, the two vessels for ruin and preservation are AT and Laras. Those are their two names. I don't know if it's ever explicitly spelled that out, but AT is ruin and Laras is preservation. I did not pick that up. I've that, surely that's in there somewhere, and I just didn't connect it. That I, think makes... I remember hearing AT at some point. A- AT is definitely in Secret yeah. History. A- AT is talks to Kelsier in Secret History. Laras is mentioned by name at least in Arcanum. Um, in the Arts Arcanum. But it, anyway, keep going. Yeah, so ATM and Larasium are two equal parts, 50-50, of Harmonium, which is also et metal. Et metal and Harmonium are the same thing. But they're not an alloy. They're not mixed metallurgically together. They're more like just wrapped together. It's not a cake. It's a burrito. There's no, no, it is a cake. It's not a burrito. No, because you can separate a burrito. You can't separate cake. Okay. It falls apart there, but cake is like chemically combined Con- constituents 
It's no right. longer flour and sugar. It's cake. Correct. That, that's not true of harmonium. It is not. Harmonium is not actually harmonium. It's atium and lauracium m- swirled. Uh, okay. Wax says specifically it's not an alloy. But you can't unsplit it, like you just said. You can't divide it. I have as issues with your uh, with your analogy, but yeah, yes, I fine, agree. With yeah, you. I, to, I I just dropped the analogy. I, had to <laughs> I kept trying to think of another one, and I was like, hot dog, swirled chocolate and vanilla ice cream. What, what is this? And I'm like, I'm going to stop trying to describe it as food right now. But anyway, it's a burrito made of really strong magnets that you can't pull apart. No, it is a cake, and it's not no. a burrito because no. you can't then separate the cake. You can separate the burrito. Well, it's but a burrito is it you can't Max separate. Is trying to do is separate the burrito. You can't separate. Am I am I wrong? Isn't that what he's trying to no, say? No, no. He he was saying it the other or? way. He was saying that it is a burrito and it's not a cake. Correct. In his in yes, his analogy. That. It is a cake because it is a new no. thing. It is a no. it is both of these things. It is flour and sugar combined to make a new thing, cake. No. So which part is the eggs and which part is the uh... <laughs> wax is the eggs. <laughs> okay. And Steris is the instructions. <laughs> She's definitely the instructions. That's for the, the recipe. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Forget my analogy. It's falling apart. I'm sorry. Redact the, the analogy. The metal itself, harmonium, is atium and lauracium. Wax g- runs a bunch of electricity through it, st- stretches it, tries to pull it apart. It, you can't pull it apart. And Vendel explains that, well, yeah, it's because harmony is harmony. And so while harmony is harmony you're not going to be able to divide those metals because that's the metal of preservation and the metal of ruin, which are as of right now, currently sharded together. So therefore that's where all the A-team went, I guess, is it buddied up with all the lorassium in the world and became harmonium. You can't separate it, but wax tries to with the trellium. And when he does that, that's when it goes boom super fast and then i'll get off the science train and let let us go back to fantasy fiction what they're talking about in these chapters is the world famous equation from albert einstein you guys surely know it off the top of your head right what's what's einstein's equation e equals mc squared right bingo e equals mc squared parentheses i for investiture at the end that you they always yeah, leave off because yeah, yeah. there's yeah. See, e, we e need equals mc squared i. Yeah, we we need an in we need an in Cosmere Albert Einstein to come in and figure out where the investiture goes in that equation. Gotcha. Because e equals mc squared is the equation of how you calculate the the transference of mass to energy. So when you set off an atomic bomb, actually most of what's happening there is just the release of energy. There's no transference, but a small amount of matter becomes energy. Becomes en- mass becomes energy. And their numbers are ridiculous. The C in your equation there is the speed of light squared. Take the speed of light, multiply it by itself. That's how much energy matter makes when you turn it into energy. It's, it's why explosions are so violent. And that's what's happening here in this, in this scene. A tiny, 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 tiny bit of trellium or harmonium or both just became energy and blew up the basement. Hence why our characters are so terrified now. They took a a grain, a tiny little grain of this, managed to blow up the basement. Now what happens when you take 100 pounds of it? And if you can figure out how to get enough energy into 100 pounds of trellium now you blow up a city yeah this coupled with their little secret notebook that they found of trying to smuggle packages into Ellendale and they come to the conclusion right that the set's trying to sneak in a bomb yep so who had uh, 
nuclear bombs on their uh, um, bingo board for Miss Monero 2. Dope. I did not. However, thinking of this, I feel like this definitely can set up into some really crazy moments whenever we start to think further about the future, about Era 3 and things like that. You know, if if technology does kind of get to that point on the Cosme, you know, like there's some pretty crazy moments, diplomatic moments that are going to happen. I have no idea how that will play out, so I'm not going to say like there's going to be nuclear weapons in in the Cosmere and that's going to be a f- focal point or something, but but the potential, the potential that we're talking about this much energy is going to be interesting and is going to, you know, we'll have to, to see where that goes. Now, if you want to go but, down the rabbit hole of asking Brandon questions at Dragonsteel, you have to ask him what exactly light weavers are doing with their light when they're creating light and put that in this equation of mm. if you're, if you're manipulating the speed of light, can you manipulate how much matter, how much energy is released by matter? Maybe very, maybe slightly related, but they, when they're talking about this and they're talking about matter and energy and stuff, he says that the smallest amount of matter, like their atom is called an axi, right? Mm-hmm. I'm pretty yep. sure they say it's called an axi. And naturally, I put the pieces together on this one, solved it, that Axie's the collector in, in <laughs> Stormlight is actually the one who discovers that, you know, who makes this scientific discovery. I mean, you might, not be, Axie. you might not be wrong. We could see that happen. I mean, it's very Isn't positive. he immortal? I don't know if he's immortal, but I know he's got all some funky stuff going on. He he's an original AME, and I believe he's immortal. So honestly, he could have come up with the idea of the Axie. We know that he's kind of a scientific, like a field researcher, if you will. Yeah. Um. So who knows? Eh, that that was the first thing that popped in my mind. So naturally, I have to predict it, and I know it's correct. So, you know. Brian was very clever with this one, but I'm looking forward to reading Stormlight 5 and seeing the chapter that uh, documents this. Or maybe it'll be in another Arcanum Unbounded or something. Who knows? That that one's you could that one you can always keep in your back pocket. Uh, if it's never confirmed, you're just like, no, it's just it's just Era 4 Cosmere. Well we'll we'll get there. Don't, yeah, don't worry. Like, exactly. We'll we'll get there. Whenever they make like a Stormlight secret history right. or something oh. like that. Yeah, it'll be like an offhanded comment. Chris will credit him in a future Arcane Unbounded. It'll just be like credit you, know. you, honestly. Yeah, exactly. It's just in the work cited. You have to like read all the way to the end. Yeah, precisely. Yeah, Axes, commonly known as the Collector. You know. All right. Chapter nineteen. We get all of our answers questioned. <laughs> yes. What, yes. <laughs> what what were what was the name drop? Give it to me. Trell is autonomy, the shard of autonomy. Paul, do you remember dropping autonomy as a prediction? Like two months ago? I remember predicting that Trell is a shard, and uh-huh. I remember trying to think of what shards do we know that aren't accounted for. Uh huh. So maybe I did. <laughs> so while in that conversation, I read off the known shards, and you then thought to yourself, okay, we know where most of these are. I don't know anything about autonomy, so I'm going to throw out autonomy. That's basically what you said. Nice. <laughs> What do you guys know I, about autonomy? Well, basically ev- everything I know about autonomy was from this chapter same. being explained to us. And I have to say, before we talk too much about autonomy, I have to say this chapter, we're informed of this by harmony. But I would like to point out that this is not harmony talking. This is absolutely 
Brandon Sanderson writing as himself, like because because <laughs> Wax says, like, really, like you're gonna tell me that just straight up, like no no guessing, no riddles or something. And he's like, yeah, I do that sometimes. I'm like, this is absolutely Brandon <laughs> Sanderson saying, yeah, I am gonna throw you a freebie every now and then, some big reveal <laughs> that you don't have to fight for, you don't have to infer, you don't have to read back. Like I'm just gonna tell it to you. And I just I couldn't help but think that this is not actually harmony speaking. This is, this is Brandon Sanderson saying yes. here, you know, here's, here's, um, here's the big news. He's, just he's, flat sitting, out. he's sitting you down in your little third grader chair and promoting you to fourth grade. And exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you're like, really? Like, like you're sitting down for like a review at work and, and it's like, okay, do you know about your performance? And you're like, I think I did fine. And they're like, Hey, you did great. Like, why are you worried? Like, come on. <laughs> you, you had a, we had a great year, you know, like you did a fantastic job. I'm proud of you. And you're like, thank you. Like that's, that <laughs> takes away all the pressure I've been feeling. You that's know? what I thought too, but it's glad to hear <laughs> you say it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But yeah, I, I'll, I'll pass it back over to, to Elliot to, to talk more about autonomy specifically, but basically everything that I know about autonomy is talked about here. I, I couldn't tell you anything else other than the name. Well, and I don't. I don't have a whole lot to. You know, no big reveals here. I, I feel like, like I get credited sometimes with the crazy, you know, predictions. And Paul, I think you, you've you've certainly got some. And that was that was one of them where you keyed in on that. And I went, I went the exact opposite direction and was completely wrong. I was I was waiting for Trell to be a a farce that Trell was going to be the Wizard of Oz and we were going to discover later that there was a man behind the curtain and this was all like a, a ruse or a distraction or something like that. Even at like the Harmony level, Harmony was going to think, oh, I'm being oppressed by this other force. In reality, we find out it's the ghost bloods who just figured out how to kind of spook Harmony, something like that. Not true as far as we can tell, as long as we believe what what Harmony is telling us, which it did feel very much like a like a Brandon lecture. So I'm I'm taking a lot of this at, at face value that's that's coming in here. So Trell is a shard. Well, help me with this though. Trell did there was some weird verbiage that Harmony used. There was some weird verbiage. Yes, I, I really should pull it up and I should pull it up and read it, but I'll I'll give you the gist. Trell is one face of autonomy. Correct. And then later on, like Telson is an avatar of one of the sides of autonomy. Correct. And it's like, uh, whoa, wh why all the clarifying words in there? Why? What's so different here? Is Can we just equate Trell to autonomy or not quite? So yeah, I think you I think you make a good point. I'm not 100 percent sure if we can just say 100 percent trail equals right autonomy. But so so my understanding of trails like gimmick trails sorry autonomy's gimmick autonomy's thing is that you know autonomy's goal is to have the these avatars these vessels whoever that autonomy is investing in to become independent right like kind of independent kind of on their own there's i'm sure there's many more rules i don't know but that's my general two second understanding that i was provided with and so we hear about telson here and i don't know what to make of this i don't necessarily Hmm. know what that means for Telson. Like, like, you know, if we think of someone as being an agent of ruin, an agent of preservation, agent of any of our other shards, I feel like I have a pretty good picture of what their motive may be. I don't, I, it's unclear to me on what the motives are. I feel like maybe autonomy is looking for like a sense of control, overall control, and that's largely tied to, seems like maybe a much more extensive, larger network let, of these avatars that others me, don't have. But I don't know. 
Sorry to interrupt you there, Paul, but I think we should go ahead and read it. I've got this section right here. Okay. Because the wording is specific, and I feel like there's a ton here that I'm not quite getting. But here's, here's what Harmony says. You rarely get to speak to autonomy herself. As I've come to find, she speaks through avatars, sometimes pieces of herself that she's allowed to gain a semblance of self-awareness, sometimes through chosen people she has given a portion of her power. Autonomy decided to destroy our world, as it is a dangerous threat to her, but I believe she has been persuaded to let it persist so long as it can be controlled. Autonomy offered me an ultimatum last year as my blinding was taking effect, and when she assumed I would be the most desperate. She demanded I give this world to her, then move to another. I rejected the demand, and one of the last things I saw was the person Autonomy has chosen, the same one who persuaded her that this world had value, and who presented her a plan for its domination. And then they go talk about Telson. But it's like, yeah, the motive, the motive of Autonomy seems like nuanced. It's not just destruction. It's, I want to take over your world and set someone of my control in power on it, I think. I think I think you're right. That That's my best guess is that you are on the right trail there, Elliot, because I'm getting the impression that it's almost like a... I don't know. I'm almost thinking of like a very... This seems like a silly example, but almost like a adventurous, like investment capital entrepreneur <laughs> like type that's like trying to set up all these like businesses or planets if you will to like work under your um leadership we'll say capitalism am i right yeah yeah exactly <laughs> the trying to set entrepreneur. Up all this, yeah trying to set all this up to work and ultimately be under your reign or for your benefit what it seems like um oh it's this is gonna step on some toes it's elon musk he's just going around starting all these starting all these different startups and stuff but but like aggressively taking over that industry with the startups that wow uh, mm, but the only thing is elon musk is very like still involved in all the things it seems like this guy is Mm, like the capitalist of like you know right having someone you know, hiring someone to run it for you and yep. you, you know, sit back and reap the benefits kind of thing. So hmm. vibe, vibes from autonomy, pretty cool. Um, but that's the only thing I can think of. I really, I feel like I'm in the dark. I feel like this is the least I've been able to intuitively know about a shard thus far. You know, if we have, I, I don't know, I can name any other shard and I feel like I can have a more clear picture of what their motives might be or what they, what, aspects they might entail not sure i think that might be the longest i've ever gone on the podcast without contributing to the conversation (laughs) just let you guys go okay two years ago i gave you guys cosmere 101 incoming cosmere 201 yeah ready let's go okay just this is not a full episode this is just a crash course okay You have seen autonomy before. Okay. Autonomy has an avatar on sixth, on first of the sun in sixth of the dusk. Patchy, the big island in sixth of the dusk, is an avatar of autonomy. How we know that? I have no idea. It's just on the wiki. Okay. I just. I just I just read these things. Um, that the, there's there's some that there's some words of Brandon in there about um, Patchy being an avatar of autonomy. Okay, we'll shelve that for a second. Autonomy is the main shard on Taldane, White Sand. Okay, is that the uh, the daytime nighttime planet or? The daytime nighttime planet. Elliot, back in the final empire, Sazed talks to Vin about Trell. 
he talks about some people on the north side of Scadrial who worship Trell. There's the one big or that they worship the night over the day and oh. they see the the thousand stars as a more pure version and then the one star is like the jealous brother. Do you remember this? Yes. That's a Taldane reference. Mm. Yeah. In Brandon's first published book besides Elantris which is crazy to me. How do you do that? Anyway, the autonomy is from Taldane. Now, let's talk about avatars. Avatars are specific autonomy thing. Okay? Fit anyone who would like to weigh in in the comments that have been waiting to talk about Trell for years on this, pod on this podcast to you guys <laughs> can now do so. Okay? Here's how I view autonomy. I view autonomy as like an amoeba parasite. Okay. Where it, it like grows and grows and grows. And then it like splits off into like two independent bodies. That's the whole thing about like autonomy as an, as in a whole shard. It wants to be self-contained, right? It, it wants to be independent. So it's gonna it's gonna grow and grow and grow and grow. If it sees a threat, it's gonna go attack it, and then it like kind of absorbs it and then splits off. That's how I view autonomy as like a a cosmere parasite. And anyone else who views it differently or has more to say on it, feel free to weigh in. But um, autonomy grows like these avatars and kind of pours investiture into them until they're independent enough to self-sustain and then it moves on. Which is why it gave Seiza the option to just back off. Because it's not a it's not overtly hostile to Harmony. It's afraid of Scadrial, like the the science on Scadrial, the the people on Scadrial. It wants to control technology. It wants to be the, the strongest thing on the block. So it offered Harmony, it offered Seiza the option to back off, go find another planet, like, you know, you know something underdeveloped, you can go live over there, and I will take over Scadrial. Harmony declined. So now, Autonomy and Harmony are now at odds fully, moving into, or a year ago, as far as this book goes. Are you guys with me? I am. Yes. Okay. So, Harmony now has to fight off autonomy or de defend against autonomy, which has chosen Telson. Uh, I think Harmony tells us that in this chapter. That yes. Yeah. Telson, Telson is going to be the avatar of autonomy mo moving forward into this book. And that's kind of where we've, we've left off, that Harmony has chosen Wax, and Autonomy has chosen Telson. And that's how we've set up part two of The Lost Metal. The Contest of Champions. There you go. Uh, any questions? <laughs> so my question is, so, so Harmony presents a plan like kind of a battle plan of like here's what we should try to do and I don't know if I'm remembering all it all correctly but doesn't it involve like does it involve trying to put someone else in Telson's place or trying to put Telson in someone else's place he mentioned something and I really I feel bad I don't remember the details of it do you know what I'm talking about not at the top of my head but as, as far as autonomy is concerned, the only reason autonomy picked Telson is because Telson seems to be the most powerful person on Scadrill. That's the only reason. So if anyone were to depose Telson, like maybe in the set, autonomy would have no problem discarding Telson and grabbing someone else. It, it just wants somebody to, to be independent and strong and Whatever the greatest host is, that's what it's going to grab. 
Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So quick Cosmere 201 question. We seem to have, in respect to other shards, there seems to be a big deal about them being tied to their world. Yeah. That like, like for instance, over on Roshar, everyone's not too worried because, oh, Odium's stuck there. Odium can't leave. So right. we're fine. You guys just fight it out. And you, we're, we're good. And you can't get your spread off Roshar because they're tied to honor. Like, yes, there, right. there's a lot of, there's a lot of occasion stuff. Yep. Right, right, right. So is autonomy different in that autonomy has a bit more universe mobility or maybe that's kind of the amoeba niche that um, amoeba ish <laughs> part that's not a word and i can't form Ami- it into one amoeba ishness yeah there you go <laughs> of of autonomy in that like autonomy autonomy is tied to talvain but is just has a really good network out there and can can break those parts of it into these avatars you're talking about out on other worlds I'm not sure exactly what my specific question is, but like, is autonomy different, I guess? So I don't have a good answer for you, but I have a question for you. If you have autonomy as your shard, what does that do to your identity? Capital I identity. Uh, connects it with autonomy. I would argue that it would be fully self-sustaining and you could go anywhere with it. Oh, I see. So identity is, we talked about this last book, the translation coin that what's his face has to talk to Marisi. It -hmm. changes, it rewrites his identity to be from the basin. And so he can talk basin talk. So I would argue that if you're if you are warped by autonomy, you your identity is fully enraptured in yourself and you're not tied to anywhere. That's what I would argue. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Fascinating. Autonomy is weird. <laughs> autonomy is weird. S- do you guys remember when we had Tim on the podcast and I had the last or episode 200 and I had the complaint that there isn't like a big bad in the Cosmere that we're not afraid of. And Tim's like, yeah, we kind of have it, but you guys haven't got there yet. He's talking about autonomy. A- autonomy does weird stuff on, on a bunch of weird different places. So whether we, you know, fight off autonomy by the end of the book or not, you know, there's plenty of other stuff going on in the Cosmere. Yeah. Hmm. I'm going to have to think about that. I was going to say, this is my like food for thought. I'm going to have to kind of wrestle with this for a bit. And as if all that you described wasn't scary enough, Harmony also drops the casual... Oh, and yeah, autonomy has an off-world army. Yeah. <laughs> what does that mean? I mean, obviously, okay, so it, autonomy has an army, and they're not from here. But just the way that's described or mentioned or referenced makes it sound like the Trade Federation and battle droids, like, by the billions. Yeah. Or, or, uh, or Infinity War. Uh, the, sure. Yeah, the aliens come down and yeah. Or is it the red-eyed, faceless immortal that blew up our good friend Uncle Edwarn? The, uh, yeah. the the men of red and gold, or whatever we've yeah. been talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Is there an army of those waiting somewhere? Not good. So that was certainly my big reveal. It was, <laughs> um, uh, like the, it's been a long time. If ever, like Ellie and I, I feel like it hasn't been much that there's been like 
oh, this is a big, like, new shard revealed to us. Like, we have at least known of the shard before it's revealed to us, at least known it should be here, you know? Um, the only times I can... I can think of this in, like, one other book, but not not much. And so I thought this was really fun, really thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, and I'm excited to see where, how, how far, it, how much more we might learn, what more we might see about autonomy. Same. There's one other thing in this episode, not nearly as lecture-esque. Uh, Mercy gets a note. Mercy does get a note. What does it say? Also, what's the description of the symbol? That was the more important fact for me. It doesn't that this word is not in this chapter, but the description is clear enough. It is the ghost bloods. The yeah. ghost bloods are on the scene. And they've sent a note to Marisi basically saying, I I wrote down a paraphrase, I don't remember exactly what it says. Basically, like, we are interested in you, or we are following you, or we're watching you. Not not like a like a threat we are watching you. It's more of like a we might hire you one day watching you. Mm. So uh Shalon is gonna go recruit Marisi. Is that what I just heard? Yeah, Shalon alongside um alongside Kelsier. Okay, yeah. Well we just we just said this is post Stormlight era one, right? It is. So it's not unfeasible. No. And this is the answer to your question you asked last episode. You said who is the shadowy figure on the outside of the slow bubble when Marisi's lecturing the, the prisoners? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, you hinted in there that it's apparently somebody ridiculous and, and bigger. But my answer for you would simply be the ghost bloods. Maybe like a ghost blood that we know, like, well, Shalon perhaps could turn into that. Or I was trying to remember what the fate of our. Scadrial crossover ghost blood that you pointed us towards the other day that the masked assassin lady oh yeah ela is yeah is is she wait no yatil yeah that's what i meant yatil e- ela is, is sadius <laughs> yeah 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 i was like wait that doesn't, that doesn't compute yeah, that would be wild. That, that <laughs> would be you're right. You, that would be the much more surprising crossover for sure. Sadius's wife shows up. That'd be nuts. Yeah, We've, Yato. We we apparently already have a masked Skadrian in the Ghost Bloods. But it, okay, so she's Malwesh Yato. Yeah, and it specifically says. The masked lady in the first episode does not have a Malwish mask. Now, does does that disqualify? No, no, absolutely not. But yeah, anyway, you're right. You're right. Was specifically described as like a cloth mask, not a wooden mask. But my my take on that was that was the ghost bloods watching Marcy. But you're telling me it's like Vin or somebody crazy. That's not what I said. I didn't say that. You said you will not believe how crazy this is, is what you said. That is more accurate to what I said. Anything else, gentlemen? That's all I got. I am very, very, very happy with uh, the level of science that we're getting here. It was. I was told going into Mistborn Era 2 that it would be, it would be quite enjoyable. It is chapters like these that are quite enjoyable. Sounds good. Let's close it there. We can reconvene next week. Thanks for joining me, Paul and Elliot. On we go. Uh, sayonara. <laughs> <laughs>